Today, I'm going to be talking about NG content. NG content uses the content projection to take HTML of another component and to display it inside itself. To me, it's similar to a film projector where you have a slot to insert your content, which is going to be displayed on the screen. It's a very powerful tool when you're building components intended for reuse. I see it used extensively in frameworks such as NG Material. When do you want to use NG content? Anytime you want to inject any kind of HTML into a component, you can do so with NG content. I have two components, child and root component, to demonstrate this feature. Inside the child component, I will create some static content, so I'll add an H2 title, and below that title, I want to show the dynamic content. So, I will create an ng content tag. With the ng content element in place, users of this component can now project their own message into the component. To do that, let me insert a child inside of our root component. And I will pass a paragraph with a message. As you can see, the ng content element is a placeholder that does not create a real DOM element. Now, except single, a component can have multiple slots. Each slot can specify a CSS selector that determines which content goes into that slot. This pattern is referred to as multi-slot content projection. You can accomplish this task by using the select attribute of ng content. Inside of our child component, add one more ng content tag. We can make our component to be like a question and answer card. So in the first ng content, add question selector, and for the second ng content, add answer selector. Now, we can use these selectors to send different content. In our root component, I will create h3 title with a question selector and I will type this question text. Below, I will create a paragraph with an answer selector, and I will type an answer text. Also, there are a couple other ways to create multi-slot content projection, but we haven't covered conditionals yet. As you can see, it's really easy to create reusable dynamic components. This approach can be used for much more complex user interfaces, but I showed you this simple example to understand the concept. Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any new uploads in this series. Also let me know in the comments if this video helped you and what would you like to see in the next video.